Seven? Episode seven already? Wow. And today we're going to talk about services businesses. Uh, we'll talk a little bit. We can share a bit <clears throat> some health wellness tips as always. Mm -hmm. um, and how to have a brilliant day, right? Always. Yeah. It's already brilliant since you're tuning in to our podcast. Mm -hmm. So hope you have a wonderful day. And so I was working on our brilliant franchise manuals mm -hmm. as we talked about. How many pages are we up to? Well, there's no pages yet. There is no numbers yet. It's just text, text, text. <laughs> uh, and I found this cool trick you know you can convert speech to text mm -hmm. and then edit it so that's what i'm doing mm -hmm. also i'll record some videos as people like watching videos but you know as i'm working on these manuals and all the processes procedures that our business have uh, the good benefit of services businesses is that it's lower upfront costs. Yep, definitely. As compared definitely. to, let's say, manufacturing. Yeah, or even construction. Where know. you have to buy very expensive machinery, equipment. Pickup, pickup trucks, equipment. Services business, you can start almost with no money sometimes. If you are, let's say, certified and knowledgeable in that specific service. Yeah, and I can talk about a technology-based services company, but really all you need to get going is computer, which you probably already have, cell phone, which you probably already have, um, some way to get around, sort of. And I'll expand on the sort of aspect of when I first started doing uh, technology consulting, it was, you know, okay, I've got to go to this person's house, this business, this, 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 and it would be three or four stops, um, sometimes in an afternoon or more in a day. And now with a lot of companies going virtual, it's, you can almost just sit in front of your computer at home or, you know, a computer, even a computer, say in a library, you don't necessarily need your own computer to do some sort of IT consulting. Yeah. So if you have skills and passion for certain industry, for example, uh, like we are passionate at Brilliant Massage and Skin about massage therapy services, facials. Mm -hmm. And, you know, going to these type of schools is not going to be as expensive as going to, let's say, four-year college or getting master's degree. Even with technology services, almost you don't need to go to college. Like, you can learn a lot of the graphic design, mm -hmm. um, website building, by yourself online these yeah. days and start that kind yeah of i i have a four-year degree from champlain college which is a local you know college here in in vermont um i i would say i'm, I'm happy that i have a degree you know i i, I like that it doesn't i doesn't hurt went, to have it yeah that i like that I, you know i went through the process and you know it was good experience you know um completing something like that. And for me, because I was working and consulting at the same time, uh, I, I was doing night classes, classes over the summer. It was, it was a little bit of a challenge sometimes, but I'm glad that I did it. But where I'm going with that in terms of consulting and IT is every IT company out there. And when I say IT companies, we'll just focus on like you know, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, et cetera. Nearly all of these companies offer free training or very, very low cost training to teach you how to use their own tools. And of course, it's they want to, people to use their tools, so train people how to use them for free, and then the microtransactions follow after that. But kind of what you said, I know um, 
with a lot of the products that you use, I think it's, you know, PCA has training as well. I don't know if it's free or not. Yeah, well, it's mm. free, but, you know, you do have to have license, aesthetics license to use professional products. But like I said, that school is going to be $10,000, maybe 15000 as compared to 100000 for college, you know. Uh, 100000 <laughs> Well, it depends if you go in-state, out-of-state, yeah. if you get scholarships and things like that. But, yeah, I, when I went to Champlain, I think it was maybe 8000 a year, maybe 9000 a year. Now it's like fifty a year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah. big difference of, you know, you graduate with hundreds of thousands and it's of sad dollars how in debt people sometimes yeah get into big student loans and sometimes they do multiple degrees because they mm -hmm. like the first degree they did they just don't want to do that job it wasn't they thought that's what they wanted but they didn't and then they end up with two debts for two degrees or you know then masters then doctorate and then they still their income might not be that great to cover all to repay all that mm -hmm. quickly you know yeah and i think with schooling i when i started network engineering that was the degree that i that that i obtained from champlain i knew that i wanted to do technology i knew that i wanted to do something with computers and networking especially but if there was any doubt in my mind, especially for people graduating high school now, look what's out there. Take a lot of these free or very low cost courses. Uh, Udemy is a site online that I've taken yeah. um, some courses on just for IT certifications. Um, the, the quality of some of those courses on Udemy can be you know, questionable. Read, read the reviews, you know. Yeah. Um, but taking a course on say uh for for whatever reason i'm thinking of flutter right now which is a cross-platform programming language um but if you think you want to be a developer you think you might want to develop for android iphone um you know take a take a 20 dollars course on flutter um look at the google resources for flutter and see if it's something that might make sense for you before you actually pursue a degree in software development. And for myself, I took two uh, semesters of software development when I was in high school. And I learned um, at the end of really the first semester of software development that there was no way <laughs> I wanted to be a software developer. <laughs> it's not for me. Uh, so and, and that was good. I'm glad that I learned that in high school and not in college. Yeah. Also, um, you know, um, using, um, for example, thing like um, using something that's already like businesses that have track record, like buying mm -hmm. from older people, uh, like trade businesses, like electrical, plumbing, yeah. uh, that is also a great way to catapult yourself into financial success yeah definitely um because those schools you get paid while you study mm -hmm. uh, for example like electrician you know like apprentice type of schools yeah. uh plumbing and then also there's a lot of people retiring that will be selling these businesses so you don't always need to invent or start your own business People think, oh, to be a business owner, I need to create my own. No, that's what the franchise franchisees um, do. That's what buying other businesses, uh, you know, provide you. Uh, and you. And usually, most likely, you'll be more successful because you have proven track record. You're going to have um, processes, systems, and already clientele that trust the brand that there's proven track record reviews mm -hmm. um so always think about that you know before you start your own some sort of business because it's it's hard yeah. it's a big learning curve it takes a lot of time it took me like almost 10 years yeah if not more to arrive to where i am today and with the trade services business, a buddy of mine that I went to high school with, he's a union electrician in, in Georgia State down south. And he's now on this track 
so to speak, to taking over uh, a, a family business of, uh, you know, a family electrical business. And the owner, you know, he he's he's getting getting older, right? You know, we're all getting older. He wants to get out of the business, but he doesn't want to just sell it to some random person, you know? Yeah. So uh, my buddy's name is Dustin, but he, he started as uh, an apprentice, um, you know, worked through, really proved himself. I think the owner potentially sees maybe some of himself in my buddy. And, you know, he's really like, I want to help you take over this business. And he's, he wasn't too forthcoming about like, in terms of the cost, which I was kind of interested in or how the ownership, but well, it, usually you could estimate based on but, the revenue. Right. But I, my uh, gut and kind of what I've got gathered is that the owner isn't really charging him much. Well, and it's, it's probably kind of a transfer, you know, to the next generation and that the owner, you know, has been very successful and wants to see his business still succeed after he's no well, longer it's, in it. Well, it's like seller financing, probably, yeah. you know, they mm -hmm. maybe have agreement that as he runs this business, he will be paying him back out of those profits. So yeah. I assume it's definitely not going to be paying a huge lump sum right. because he would have to take a loan. So it's probably a lot of these businesses can be purchased by owner finance mm -hmm. because it's like that owner's baby. They yeah. want to sleep right at night knowing that yep. someone that took over that business is going to be uh, running it with the same integrity yeah. and passion that they would. And especially with that business, the a lot of the clients you know the owner was working with the the parents and then now the owner is doing electrical work for those parents children and seeing those children start businesses and so it's that taking care of each generation of keeping everything in the family and keeping your reputation and that quick turnaround with service and leaving a good mark on the community with your name yeah, so, you know, you got to look out for those opportunities mm -hmm. as you're young. Don't just think to rack up, you know, thinking that college is some sort of saving, real, like, proven just one path to success. Um, you know, it's a tool that you can use, but it's only a tool. It's not means to all, you know. Yeah. Um, and also the thing with services business in general, regardless if you start your own or you buy or you get into buy like into a franchise brand, is that it's a growing need. Um, there's the, always going to be a need. Yeah, there's always going to be need in these home businesses and technology businesses and self care wellness businesses because guess what? It's for robots. It's more difficult to. Um, replace these type of services than let's say um, copywriting or design like logo design because they can uh, go through millions of things um, that are out there online let's say for copywriting and learn like robot can learn how to do it as far as like plumbing or doing massage or doing like on-site IT support, it's much more difficult mm -hmm. uh, because they can't get into your body and learn your like ex physical experience yeah, to reproduce it as easily. And uh, for a lot of these businesses, there's a physical aspect of it. You know, IT infrastructure, could a, a robot do IT infrastructure? I mean, I guess never say never, but you know, there's that component of what came first, the chicken or the egg. Can a robot work without infrastructure, you know, to communicate with whatever cloud environment it's working on? Um, the same thing goes with the trades. And what I wanted to say when we were talking about the trades a little bit a few minutes before here is I think a lot of times people think of the trades as like electricians, you know, mechanical, plumbers, tin knockers, you, you know, whatever. But there's also other trades that or maybe not as popular, but still vastly in demand cobblers, you know, here in Vermont, there's like two, 
two cobblers. What do they do? Uh, you know, shoe repair. You know, oh. putting on new soles, shoe repair. Do people still repair their shoes, though? I was at a, years ago, I was at a Celtics game. The owners of a company I was working for, you know, had given me tickets to go to a Celtics game and I was sitting courtside and one of the individuals sitting next to me was uh, a lady that had on, uh, you know, Maybe high, Louis would talk. High, high heel shoes. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. She's got high heel shoes on. And then someone had mentioned, was like, oh, do you know, like, did you see her shoes? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. And like, those shoes start at like eight grand. <laughs> These like red sole shoes. Well, that's Louis Vuitton shoes. The other thing yeah. is, you know, watchmakers. Um, I personally like mechanical watches, even though I don't have on one right now. But you, that's a, 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 trade that is very much in in demand and has a significantly aged population that's still doing it Mm -hmm. yeah so there's a lot of different services trades and industries out there that people can look at that things like that are never really going to go away yeah. And, you know, um, yeah, so those are uh, important to look into and think about what kind of salary you want to be making. You know, those sh- don't just think like, oh, like, I think I'm interested to study this, like, Spanish history. But then think about, like, do you want to teach that? And are mm-hmm. you going to be happy with, and no offense, like, to anyone who studied spanish history or whatever else you know that's totally fine but then think about like are you how are you gonna apply that to real life when you have to face the bills maybe you mm-hmm. could come up with some app that teaches people about spanish language and stuff you know that could be lucrative but i feel like you gotta have a goal in mm-hmm. mind after before you pay all that those fees for your degree you know if yeah or maybe your spouse makes good money and you know teacher's salary is okay you know you don't need to make um, well, and and a nothing, certain amount of yeah money. nothing says that what your career is is what you do every day all day for the rest of your life it could be a po- a, com- a component you know i you know, like doing other things besides technology, you know, biking, you know, renovations, things like that, that find something that is a great career that also potentially can provide, you know, a good life for you, but don't forget about enjoying life as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's the wellness aspect. Yeah. Um, also, I don't know, I don't think I spoke about this, but mm-hmm. it's so crazy. Uh, co- a month ago, <clears throat> I had my first ever panic attack, and I mm. I never had ever panic attacks before, and people would say, like, oh, I'm having, like, a panic attack. I'll be like, "How? what is that? How is that possible? How does that feel? Why would someone have it? And I think, it, you, you know? know, if you want to share a little bit what, cause the panic attack too well so that i maybe think people can understand it's the... a combination of things first mm-hmm. of all i was stressed out about uh setting up like the franchise llc trying to decide like on certain uh well i don't want to go into detail because it's a bit um i guess but I confidential think, well but, i think what I, where there, i was going there were thing, yeah. yeah so that was one thing i was just that being stressed and being stressed i in had life. stress yeah. in my body that i mm-hmm. should have not stressed because guess what no matter what happens the world will not end mm-hmm. and nothing will uh you know fall apart just because of some one little thing uh and you can always fix it as long as you're alive and then uh then also i was going through uh this naturopathic medical treatment and we were traveling and then we I was ordered a salad with shrimp and then I thought I swallowed like a piece of plastic and it actually must have been like a piece of the shrimp I think it was like the shrimp covering like shell. shell not like shell but that see-through yeah that uh, I guess that shell. is the shell yeah, yeah. um 
And then... It's something you're probably not really expecting, even though a salad had shrimp on it, but something kind of like that. And the sauce was kind of like very kind of vinegary, like Mm. vinegar that kind of made your throat feel weird. And then I just like felt that sensation like some sort of sharper piece when I was swallowing. And I'm like, I just suddenly got tingles in my body, dizzy. And I had, I got up, I stopped eating right away. I Mm -hmm. couldn't swallow like another bite. I got up, went to the restroom and it was like next to the open door to outside. And once the fresh air hit me, I kind of started feeling a little bit better, but I still wasn't feeling good. My heart rate was all over the place. I checked on my eye watch. I've never seen my heart rate be so irregular. And and my body started shaking, my muscles started shaking that I like I in my head I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna die. I swallow a piece of plastic, it's gonna puncture my esophagus or stomach or whatever. And I couldn't shake off these thoughts. Uh, that in my mind I thought that's what happened. You know, and then we went for a walk and then seemed to help, like the shakes kind of stopped. But the adrenaline is what causes those shakes in the muscle. Right. You can't stop, like your body pushes adrenaline and then you shake uh, pretty bad. Um, it was almost like, do I need to go to emergency room? But then like I just looked online, done some research, you know, the signs of panic attack. I'm like, oh my God, that's what just happened to me. Mm-hmm. And I never want to have it again. Um, well, but then I realized I yeah. need to relax. Yeah. And, and a lot of that is, you know, I think we often and I often get caught up in. You never want to say no to work. You know, if work's coming in, you don't want to say no. Um, personally, I do kind of like the stress of it. I like a good challenge, but at the same time, there's been a couple of times that I realized, oh my God, like this, this week, I've literally been working 12 plus hour days every day. And then other things kind of go to the wayside, you know, maybe you're not eating as well. Uh, Maybe you're eating kind of like, you know, trail mix or nut bars instead of proper meals because it's easier, quicker on the go. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that I wasn't. like protein bars. Yeah. And a couple of weeks ago, maybe a little bit more than a couple of weeks ago, but I was, you know, really stressed with just a lot of work, a lot of projects going on, working a lot. And I could tell like my lower back and my body was like, you know. You need Parting. to you need to slow down a little bit. I mean, maybe not slow down, but you need to go go to the get gym. Get a massage. Yeah, get a massage. You need to stretch out your back. You need to be careful. And I was thinking to myself, like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, I'm fine. I'll I'll get to it. I'll get to it. And then there was, I think it was a Saturday morning, and things had slowed down a little bit. Kind of wrapped things up that Thursday, Friday, and I was like, all right, great. Now I can get get over to the gym and I was in the locker room. I had just put on my running shoes and had a foot up on the bench to tie my shoe and like lower back locked up so bad, almost like fell to the ground, could barely walk for like a day or two. And then eventually it loosened up. And um, that's kind of, you know, something that we need to be careful about, especially if you're in a services industry where sometimes services are 24 seven. Well, that's you know, why you have to really, listen to your body. Yeah, and you have to prioritize. It, it's good to prioritize clients and client work, but all of that's going to fall to the wayside if you're not prioritizing yourself. Uh, well, that's what, you know, since January this year, my New Year's resolution was in 2023 to put self-care and wellness first because if we don't do that guess what you won't be able to serve others and run your business as well so now i i'm back to routine like i used to have years ago where exercise was just you know it's on the schedule and it's non-negotiable like almost every day there's some days i take off like when 
like we go to events like some days I won't do any exercise or go to the gym like Tuesday I didn't but like most like Monday Wednesday I go to body pump like Thursday Friday I either do uh spinning or running mm -hmm. or uh swimming maybe sun tomorrow maybe I'll do or maybe I'll do another weight training and it's just non-negotiable to at least five days a week to get that an hour in my calendar. But then like once you do it, you get all this stuff, other stuff done anyways. You yeah. know, it seems like I don't have the time, but you know what? Then you will have to have the time when you like throw your back out yeah. you know? or yeah. you get a panic attack. You know, you have to. Yeah. And depending on what sport you enjoy what sport you like there's ways of kind of catching up on some level of work at the same time and i'll explain that more here is you know i like cycling um you know obviously you can't cycle all the time especially here in vermont with the the weather so okay it's like indoor recumbent bike um you know, you want to enjoy the exercise, but you can also, uh, you know, maybe do some level of planning on your phone. Um, I don't do know. Do I, I can't do the, I, with the body pump. Yeah. That, though. Uh, well, body pump is different because that's kind of a class. But, um, you know, like when I've been like, you know, running, um, I'll try to think about, you know, maybe trying to plan out like a project or think about, uh, you know, just just things in general. But sometimes it's also nice just to zone out, too. Uh yeah, it, if it's low impact, mm -hmm. I can do that. Or I listen to like podcasts or audiobooks. Yeah. It's, but if it's like high impact, sometimes it's difficult because you have to focus mm -hmm. on the, what you're doing that moment. Right. And it's yeah. good because it takes you off uh, that work mode for, you know, at least an hour. So yeah. it's good to have breaks too. Yeah. And, if it's difficult finding the time for exercise, what I've found is think about times throughout the day that, you know, maybe you could squeeze in five, 10, 15 or minutes. Or actually, things. to your point, like mm -hmm. working while exercising, mm -hmm. like if you have stand up desk or even some people yeah. have like treadmill by yeah, their treadmill desk, desk yeah. and they will like, walk in place on it yeah. while they're on their computer yeah or if you're or on the zoom call you know if you're driving or you're in the car and it's safe to do so uh you know maybe call a vendor place an order call a vendor chit chat about maybe a project that you have coming up trying to utilize that time that is sometimes just kind of sitting there to make time to do exercise later on in the day maybe taking kind of like a, okay, I'm going to run to say city market, which is like a local grocery yeah. store. Um, you know, Hey, I'm downtown. Like instead of driving, I'm going to walk there or maybe I'll do a quick jog there, get my food, jog back. So kind of combining some things where there's a destination for the yeah. exercise, but also, um, you know, kind of getting food at the same time as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, using time productively yeah, and wisely. wisely. Yeah. 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 Because it will uh you know, it will especially as we get older, we have to start paying more attention to things we eat, the exercise we do, you know, you want to we can age well and uh just because we get older doesn't mean we have to gain weight or put on fat you know and um staying active it's healthy for the brain as well memory mm -hmm. to get all that blood flow oxygen uh and then getting massage you know facials that kind of stuff you live once so you know you have to also do these things too yeah to try to enjoy life now and you know what we were talking about before and kind of the idea behind this episode with services based businesses is you want to provide the best services for your clients and your customers but you should also want to do the same for yourself you yeah know? Yeah, well, you got to, and then hire help, you know, outsource yeah. to. Or automation. 
Yeah, and then ask for help when you need it. Mm -hmm. um, so that way you don't get burned out and overwhelmed. Yep. But um, yeah, services is uh, the future human interaction that's it will be harder for robots to replace human touch and uh you know things that you you just i don't know how much longer we'll have to wait until we will have like robots go into any house and find like a leak and fix pipes that's gonna be a long time you know so definitely uh, yeah i mean i've been hearing about robots taking over you know for for years um I think that there's a there's a place for automation, there's a place for robots, but then there's clearly a place for humans too. Yeah. And you know, maybe some jobs are potentially going to be eliminated by robots or No, AI. they are. They are but, going to. Yeah. You know, that's been the case for hundreds of years. Yeah. You know, a a person making wagon wheels, you know that job is no longer really a job yeah. but making wheels for automobiles is you know making combustion engines you know the combustion engine is going to eventually be replaced by well, electric manufacturing uh manufacturing mm -hmm. jobs that but it's it's with technology it's with services you know if you are like you know what i'm gonna only support windows xp and windows 2000 or vista or you know whatever you're going to get left behind. You know, you got to innovate at the same time as everybody else is and learn the new technology and pivot to whatever is in the future. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, for, let's say, massage and skincare businesses, I feel like the advantage that we offer as a franchisor is that um, you can find, we can help people find already existing mm -hmm. um, medical offices which really don't require that much build out and it's easy to adapt almost every neighborhood can benefit from these type of businesses so wherever you live you could probably have this type of uh, business like yeah. ours and um, the school you know like I mentioned finding people to hire it's not that much that not that expensive for people to attend school and then easily apply to jobs because sometimes you know hiring people is an issue but there's always new graduates from mm -hmm. you know aesthetics and massage schools that can be hired or uh, people that are looking for a great place to work at uh, so definitely a lot of benefits and the growing need and um, not going to be replaced, I think, by Roth Robot. And, you know, just from what we've been seeing on the, the IT side of things is working with a lot of different businesses across the United States and Vermont is there's a very slow return to the office, if at all. So, and where I'm going with that is things like if you're looking at a massage franchise, office space especially in these commercial office buildings is quite plentiful it's quite cheap as well um office space is well cheaper than oh uh, i guess more than it used to be for sure yeah yeah and um you know office space as much as a lot of people say well we should convert these huge buildings um you know that are vacant office buildings into housing it's not as easy as people would think you know typically there's you know a bank of elevators you know there's simplified plumbing you know you to a lot of these buildings have windows on the exterior but not on the interior so the idea of converting these large office buildings into housing is not just throw up some sheetrock and put in some toilets and call it a day uh, but there's a lot of medical that's going to virtual um, you know, phone console, FaceTime console. So finding medical office space is quite plentiful. And, yeah. and then it typically is in 
uh, you know, well-maintained buildings with plenty of parking, which is kind of like the trifecta of what you're looking for. Yeah, because you can't do service franchise. Yeah, that remotely. You can't massage remotely. <laughs> yeah, and then that kind of goes back to okay, you know, you're opening up a massage franchise, where it kind of goes into the the world that I'm more familiar with is is technology. So it's like okay, you're a massage franchise. Well, you need a point of sale system. You need, you know, a wireless networking system. You need a firewall. You need internet connection. All this stuff is never going away. It's Me changing too. in terms yeah. of what you need. It's becoming more important. Um, you know, the when I was in college, one person was kind of considered really one wireless device because you would have typically a laptop that was wireless. But now when we're building wireless networks, it's almost one person is three to five devices because they have a phone, they have a laptop, you know, maybe they have a, a smartwatch, tablet. So it's like all of a sudden, okay, you only have 10 people in an office building. Why do I have 50, 60, 70, sometimes even more wireless devices connected to my network? Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, I really want to touch on technology because it's really done well for myself. And, you know, the sky's the limit is that, you know, one of the big rushes years ago was the move into wireless technology. And then it was cloud. And now it's really security. Security is um, really the hot topic right now because it's just, unfortunately, it's relatively the new norm. And with you know massage it's never going away with it it's never going away it it's going to be in a different form it's going to morph into a different type of technology but it there's always going to be a need for technology based services business mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> and there is um also a lot of job openings for it too right Yeah, I was drinking my coffee right when you asked that question. But yeah, there is. And the thing with cybersecurity, especially now, is it's a lot of insurance companies are mandating that you have a SOC or a security operations center, whether that's internal or external. And to get people that know security or want to do security is very in demand right now. So a lot of these positions are relatively easy to obtain with the right certifications. And when I say the right certifications, a lot of these certifications are relatively basic in terms of IT world, um, you know, entry level certifications in security and networking technologies, which can you just walk in, sit down, take the tests and pass maybe, but you know, there's, there's going to need to be some level of studying, but there is so much information out there um, you know, for, say, Microsoft Azure, which is what I'm most familiar with in terms of a public cloud platform. If you're looking at cloud security, there is a ridiculous amount of free training, free labs, free credits to use cloud resources from Microsoft to obtain those certifications. And if you're a student or you've been impacted by economic struggles, a lot of times to take these tests, it's essentially free. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of companies are really looking at certifications now because, okay, you went to college, you know, say you got a degree in IT 10 years ago, which really isn't that long, right? When you think about 10 mm -hmm. years. Okay. Are any of those technologies still around? No, uh, they change. Some, some of a them lot are. Of them yeah. Change. You know, yeah. like when I was graduating um, college, um, you know, Windows 2003 was you know the the most popular windows server operating system at the time obviously um well i should say no one's using that because i know there are people out there still using windows 2003 unfortunately but you know the concepts go from one operating system to another and that's a lot with uh cyber security too and services-based businesses is you might not exactly know how to use cloud technologies but networking is networking right at the end of the day um IP, transit, packet transit, that's regardless if it's a virtual network or a network that's in your massage franchise office, the concepts are there the same. Yeah, it's a lot of technical terms. Half of them I don't understand. <laughs> I think where, you know, for technology, really, it's 
looking at what you really want to do if you're trying to get into a services-based technical field, service-based technical company of what do you enjoy about IT? Because a lot of times people look at me and they say, oh, nice, you're an IT guy. Can you build me a website? Nope, it's not me. I don't do websites. I'll, I'll set up the infrastructure for you to host your website. Um, you know, but that's still websites, infrastructure, still IT. Well, design and infrastructure is two different things. Yeah, and there's, you know, there's a breadth of technologies that fall under IT. So it's really looking at what you want to do and what you know makes you want to get up and go to work or work on your business and then pursuing that aspect of of of, of technology yeah well let us know in the comments down below your thoughts mm -hmm. and uh thank you for listening yeah do you have to add anything nicholas I don't think so. I think my biggest thing about around services, if anybody's interested in starting a services based business is just give it a go. There's so many service based industries out there that there's little to no upfront cost um, that you can really get into it as a side gig and it can really turn into your primary yeah. career. Or you could join other company. Are you hiring? We'll see. Always looking for good people. Looking for help, I've heard. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I, again, I have, hope everyone is having a brilliant day. Mm -hmm. uh, stay stress-free. Uh, Prioritize and, yourself. Yes. Uh, take care of yourselves and everything else will fall into place as well. Have so, a brilliant day. Yep, and we'll see folks next episode. Yes. Yeah. Yeah.